This tutorial features a beautiful wine bag that makes a great gift and also just very nice home decor. Hello everyone and welcome to Chardet Crochets. For this uh, wine gift bag, I will be using Yarn Bee Secret Soft in the color Biscuit. And it is a medium weight four yarn. It is kind of on the thinner side of the worsted weight yarns, but it is very nice. And I think any worsted weight should work for this pattern. Um, this yarn has a nice sheen to it. That's kind of why I chose this. I wanted a more luxury feel for my gift bag. And um, I'll be using a G hook, a four millimeter hook. And you'll also need a pair of scissors. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we are going to do is make a slip knot. You can also make a, a magic ring if you prefer here. Um, so I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the very first chain. And from there, I'm going to make sure that I find the center of that circle. I'm going to chain one. And then this chain one is not a stitch. But um, actually, I'm going to chain two. Sorry. I just looked at my pattern. I'm going to chain two, and then this is not a stitch, okay? We're going to put 15 double crochets into the center of this ring. So yarn over and put a double crochet into the center of the ring. One. Two. Three, and you can um, crochet over this tail as you go. So go ahead and finish doing your 15 double crochets. So once you com have completed your 15 double crochets, go ahead and find that very first double crochet of the row and go ahead and slip stitch. Now from here what we're going to do is chain two and we're going to turn our work and you can always pull this little string a little bit tighter and if you did a magic ring this will close completely I don't mind it being open because it's at the bottom of a wine bottle so I mean I kind of think it looks good <laughs> but it's your personal preference so anyway, from here, chain two and turn, and then we're going to put two double crochets into that very first chain space. And two. And from here, we're going to put two double crochets in every chain space for the rest of the row. So in this row, you should have 30 um, double crochets total. So go ahead and put two double crochets in every stitch until you have 30 and I'll meet you there and I'll show you what's next. And once you complete your 30 double crochets, go ahead and find that very first double crochet of the row and slip stitch. Okay, so once you get your 30 double crochets and slip stitch, go ahead and chain two and turn your work. And from here, what we're going to do now is um, in the first stitch, we will put two double crochets. 
So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and in that same stitch, we are going to put one more double crochet. And then in the next stitch, we are just going to put one double crochet. And in the following stitch, we will put two double crochets into the same stitch. One and two. And then in the next stitch, we will just put one double crochet. So this row is alternating between putting two double crochets into the same stitch and then putting one double crochet in the next stitch. So we are going to continue this pattern for the rest of the round and uh, you should have 45 double crochets total. So go ahead and finish this round and I'll meet you there. All right, and once you're done with 45, your last stitch should just have one uh, double crochet in it, and that will be your 45th double crochet. Once you do that, go ahead and find your very first double crochet of the row and slip stitch. All right, so once you slip stitch, go ahead and chain one. And turn your work and now our this is the base of our wine bottle so you might want to just make sure that this is wide enough to cover your bottle this one is a white wine bottle and I know like uh, certain red wines come in this shape too um, this is the skinnier one and then this one is the big one so as long as this is covering your bottle you should be fine um it does cover both the big shaped bottle and the little shaped bottle so anyway from here chain one and turn your work and what we're going to do next is we're going to put two half double crochets into this very first stitch so yarn over and pull through all of the loops on the hook so two half double crochets in the first stitch I just need an increase because I do like the size of this base but I need an even number in this row if that makes sense so we're just putting one increase in the first stitch and then from there we're going to do one half double crochet in every stitch until the end of the row. So we are done with our increases of the circle. Um, and this is what makes, once you stop increasing the circle, it won't lay flat anymore. It'll start to go upwards instead of flat. So just go ahead and put one half double crochet in every stitch and I will meet you at the end of this row. And you should have 46 half double crochets at the end of this row. Alright, so once you complete your 46 half double crochets for this row, go ahead and find that very first half double crochet of the row and slip stitch and you can already kind of see that now the base is starting to curl upwards and that's what we want we're starting to go vertical because we stopped increasing in our circle and next what we are going to do is chain one and turn our work and from here, what, what we're going to do is we're going to put a single crochet in the first stitch. And we're going to go around the circle with one single crochet in every stitch. So at the end of this row, you should have 45, 46 
sorry, 46 single crochets. So go ahead and single crochet one in every stitch and I will meet you at the end of this row. So once you finish your 46 single crochets in this row, go ahead and find that very first single crochet of the row and slip stitch. So once you slip stitch in, in this row, you can kind of see that um, it's starting to really curl up words and that's exactly what we want and this is the last time that we're actually going to turn our work so from here what we're going to do um, we're going to chain four one two three and one more four so this chain four is going to count as a stitch. It is a double crochet. So I'm counting the three, the chain three as a double crochet. And then the chain one is just a chain one. So we chain four and then we're going to count that as the first stitch. And so we're going to skip a stitch and then double crochet into the next stitch. So we're actually double crocheting into the third stitch of this round. From here, chain one, skip one, and then double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, Skip the next stitch and double crochet into the next stitch. So this is what we're doing. We're going to continue this pattern until the end of the row. Okay, so when you get to the end of this row, you'll have, you should have one chain space um, in between your very last double crochet and your chain three. So when you get here, go ahead and chain one more. And then we're going to slip, slip stitch into that third chain of your first chain four. So one, two, three, we're going to slip stitch into, try to get two of these loops here. Uh, I think I just split it. <laughs> there we go. And we're going to slip stitch in that third chain space of the chain three. All right, so once you slip stitch into that chain three space, remember we are not turning our work anymore. We're just going to go in the round without turning. So once you're done with this row, we're going to slip stitch into the empty box space in this empty chain space here. So go ahead and slip stitch so that you're actually in this box. Okay. So now we are going to work a puff stitch. This is the first puff stitch of the row. So in order to start it off, we're going to chain two, one, two, and then we're going to yarn over insert our hook into this chain space and pull up a loop and pull this loop up to that same height as the chain two. And then we're going to do that three more times. So yarn over, insert your hook into the chain space, pull up a loop and pull it up high. That's two. That's three. and four. Now once you have, at this point, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Nine loops on your hook. Go ahead and yarn over and pull through all nine. And that is your puff stitch. And from here, we're going to chain two, one and two. Okay. And then we are going to 
do another puff stitch in this next empty chain space. So we don't have to, um, we're already at the height that we need to be, so we're only chaining two at the beginning of the very first puff stitch. The rest of them you don't have to. So go ahead and yarn over, and then insert your hook into the next empty chain space, and pull up a loop, and pull it as high as the other puff stitch. And we're going to do that three more times so it's four times total four and then once you do that four times go ahead and yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook and that is your next puff stitch so from there go ahead and chain two one and two and then we are going to do our next puff stitch in the next empty chain space so this is pretty much the pattern for this row we are doing puff stitches and then we are chaining two in between so go ahead and continue this pattern until you reach the end of the row and at the end of this row you should have 23 puff stitches in this row all right so i just finished my last puff stitch and what i'm going to do is chain two and then i am not going to slip stitch into this um chain two i'm going to try to find like I'm going to count up three, one, two, three, and try to slip stitch on the, the, on top of the puff stitch, but not so that, so I don't like that one because it's going to separate this puff. So maybe I'll do the fourth. So that's one, two, three, and four. I'm going to slip stitch on the fourth one as to not really separate this chain this chain two from a puff stitch so as long as it's not pulling this away from it and giving you a hole then go ahead and slip stitch so actually it was one two three and four and then I slip stitched and that's kind of how we want it to look okay so once you have slip stitched into your first puff stitch of the row go ahead and chain one and then this is a little bit tricky, but what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet before this first puff stitch. Okay, so we're, we're not going to go forward. We're kind of like pushing this first puff stitch backwards. And then we're going to go back here and do a single crochet. And this just kind of helps you to um, keep this puff stitch in this side and so that this chain two doesn't separate from it it kind of gives it a better feel all right and once you're done with that first single crochet go ahead and do two single crochets in between the next two puff stitches so two single crochets there one and two and then this pattern is going to continue for this row so we're just putting two double crochets in between every puff stitch so just make sure you separate them so that you don't snag the puff and like separate the puff from itself but yeah, go ahead and continue this pattern until the end of the row. All right, so I finished up until I reached almost my very first single crochet of the row. And because we're doing two single crochets in between every puff stitch, we did one before this puff stitch. So we do need to put one more single crochet in between 
the very first puff stitch and the very last one. So put one more there and then go ahead and slip stitch into your first single crochet of the row. Okay, so once you are have slip stitched, what we're going to do next is chain four. One, two, three, and four. And this chain four counts as, again, a double crochet plus a chain one. And so this does count as a stitch, so we're, we've already technically used this first stitch. Now we're going to skip the second stitch and we're going to double crochet into this third stitch. So this row is very similar to, it's actually exactly the same as the row that we did before. So double crochet, chain one, skip a stitch and double cro crochet into the next stitch and then chain one skip the next stitch and double crochet into the next stitch. So go ahead and complete this row with this pattern and I will meet you there and show you what's next. So just like the beginning or the end of that previous row that we did down here, um, once you finish your last double crochet, you should have one more chain space here in between your first one. So just chain one and then count up to the third chain of your chain four and slip stitch in there and try to try to get both loops if you can. It's just more secure. So go ahead and slip stitch into that third chain space of the chain four. Okay, so once you have slip stitched, what we're going to do next is chain one. And then we're going to put two single crochets into this empty chain one space. So go ahead and put two single crochets here. And then we're just going to put two single crochets in every empty chain space. So go ahead and continue this pattern to the end of the row and I will meet you there. All right, and once you finish your round of single crochets, go ahead and slip stitch into the very first single crochet of the row. So now you can see that the bag is definitely forming. Um, from here we're going to repeat rows 6 through 10 and we're going to, going to repeat them three more times. So starting from this row down here where we did the um, the chain four and uh, then from there we did double crochets in every other stitch. From this row going on, it's, that's the repeat pattern. So go ahead and repeat this pattern three more times and I will meet you there and show you what's next. Okay, so once you finish uh, the repeating rows, we're going to go ahead and do one more row of the chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then we are going to, um, this is going to count as a double crochet and a chain one and then we're going to skip the next chain space and double crochet into the third one so we're going to do one more row of these empty box spaces so after you double crochet chain one and then skip a chain and double crochet so go ahead and complete this uh, 
one more row of this pattern and I will meet you there and show you what to do after that. So once you do your last double crochet like we did before, go ahead and chain one and then slip stitch into the third chain of your chain four of the beginning of the row. And next what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch into this empty, this next empty chain space. So slip stitch into that space and then chain three. One, two, three. And now we're going to put nine double treble crochets into this empty space. So yarn over twice, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over pull through two, yarn over pull through two, yarn over pull through two. And then we're going to put eight more into this same chain space. nine so after you're done putting your nine double treble crochets into that space chain three one two three and then we are going to slip stitch into the same chain space And that is our like little ruffle for the top of the bag. So next we are going to slip stitch into the very next chain space, empty chain space. And then chain three. And then we're going to add nine into this space as well. And then when you finish with your nine, go ahead and chain three. And then slip stitch into the very same chain, empty chain space. And this is pretty much our pattern. So we're going to slip stitch into the next empty stitch, empty chain space, chain three, and then put nine double trebles in here, chain three and slip stitch. So continue this pattern until the end of the row and I'll meet you there. So once you finish your last uh, set of nine double treble crochets, go ahead and chain three, one, two, three, and slip stitch into the same chain space. So now once you are finished with this ruffly row, um, we are going to begin the strap for the bag. So 
The first thing that we're going to do is make a chain of 80. So just start chaining out one, two, three, four, five until you get to 80. So once you have chained out 80 from your working yarn, we're going to find the halfway point. So let me fold this so that, there we go. So we're going to fold this bag in half and find the halfway point. And the halfway point is if you consider this set of nine double treble crochets, I'm gonna call this a ruffle. Um, there are 23 ruffles. So the 12th ruffle away in either direction would be the middle ruffle on the other side. So go ahead and find your 12th ruffle away from where your working chain came from. And then you're going to count uh, three double, cro double treble crochets inward. So this is a chain three that doesn't count. So the chain three and then one, two, three. This is your third double treble crochet, and we're just going to pull that open, and you see that there's that base chain space under this ruffle set. So what we're going to do from the inside, with the inside of the bag facing you, you're going to put your hook behind that little chain space there, and we are going to, my yarn's a little bit twisted. There we go. We are going to slip stitch this chain to that base there. So go ahead and pull up a loop and then slip stitch there. And from there, we're going to chain one and turn our chain so that we can work back along this chain. So I'm going to turn my chain, get it all situated here. <laughs> I'm going to turn my chain so that I can start single crocheting back along this chain. So that's my chain one and it looks like that might be a little bit tight to work into, but I'm going to try to find the very first chain that I can reasonably, reasonably work into. Don't worry if it's off a little bit. It might be the 79th chain that you're working into, but go ahead and do a single crochet in the first available chain that you can find back along this chain and we're just going to single crochet back along this chain so go ahead and single crochet back along this chain and I will meet you back when we meet when we reach the other side All right, so once you get all of your chains, uh, get all of your single crochets done, we're going to pull this last slip stitch that we did from the previous row. We're just going to pull it slightly over, and we are going to slip stitch around that base alongside this ruffle here, okay? So go ahead and slip stitch your chain back to the other side. So once you have slip stitched to the other side, we're going to go ahead and chain one and we are going to turn our chain so that we can do another row of single crochets. So what you want to do is find that first stitch and single crochet and then single crochet your way back along 
this chain until we reach the other side. Okay, so now we have two rows of single crochets along this strap. And when we get here, we're now back on the side that has the ruffle in the middle. So we're going to push this fourth double treble crochet of that middle ruffle. Let me get my yarn on the other side. Boom. Okay, so <clears throat> so we are going to take this fourth ruffle here and we're going to push it over so that we're now again revealing this base under the ruffle. And this base under the ruffle between the fourth and fifth double treble crochet is where we are going to slip stitch once more and then we are going to chain one turn our chain so that we can work back along this chain and we're going to do one more row of single crochets so go ahead and begin single crocheting back along this chain and I will meet you at the other side. All right, so once you have slip stitched your third row of single crochets back to the beginning base, what we're going to do next is we're going to take our strap and just make sure that it's not twisted and it's going to naturally kind of bend inwards so it's kind of like bending already inwards like this so we're actually just going to go ahead and fold the strap to itself fold it in half but we're going to do that starting on this side so you kind of have to move this around until it kind of fits how you can crochet it so let's see i'm gonna have to pull my yarn through here like that boom okay so now i can kind of see how i can crochet this i'm gonna fold the two the two sides inwards to each other and I'm going to try to match up one stitch to the stitch on the other side. So I'm just going to insert my hook into, I'll make sure, I already chained one. I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch that I can find. And then I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch on the opposite side like that and then I am going to single crochet them together and that's all I'm doing now this is a foundation chain unless you did like the humps in the back you can kind of do this as best as you can but basically that is all we're doing we're going to match up one stitch from the foundation chain to one of the single crochets on the other side just try not to skip any chains any stitches and try not to go through any stitch twice so go ahead and single crochet these two sides together and I will meet you at the end of this row and show you what's next. Okay, I have one more single crochet left. This one is tight because it's the last one. There we go. Well, there we go. Single crochet. 
And then I'm going to, before I slip stitch, I'm just gonna make sure that my strap is not twisted. And I'm going to kind of turn it so that now this is the between the fourth and fifth double treble crochet. I'm going to slip stitch it in between the next set, the fifth and the sixth. So So yeah, I'm just going to find that bar under the ruffle between the fifth and the sixth double treble crochet and then I'm going to slip stitch the ending of my strap to that and then I'm going to cut and tie chain one and cut and tie off. So now we are going to start on the drawstring. So go ahead and make a slip knot and then we're going to make a chain of 86. So go ahead and chain out 86 chains here. And once you chain out 86 chains, go ahead and chain one more and cut and tie off. And from there, I'm just going to um, align my two tails and make sure that they're even. So I'm just going to line them up and cut them so that they're nice and even. And next we are going to weave them into the bag. So we're going to weave them into the row below the ruffles. So into those empty um, chain one spaces below the ruffle is where we're going to weave our drawstring in and out. So just count over five empty box spaces away from the strap in any direction and that's where we're going to start weaving and then there's one in the middle there that we're not going to use that's the sixth one so in the fifth one you want your tail coming out because we're going to tie our bag on the outside and then we're going to just weave our string in and out just uh, once in, once out in every empty box space. So just keep weaving until you reach the other side. And once you reach the other side, your very last string should go outward and you should have that one empty chain space in the middle, which is like kind of the space where we're going to tie. And you can go back and just make sure that your strings are evenly coming out of the bag. And that is your tie. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and hit that notification bell for future videos.